Hey guys, we're in Prague's Meat Factory Club with legendary Attila from Mayhem. Thank you, sir, for finding time for us. Extremely appreciate it. Thank you. It's great to be here. But I understood you had a couple of few minutes to check around Prague. You went to downtown? Not uh, quite one town, but um, I asked the guys, like, you know, we had an hour before the interview, so I really wanted to try some good Czech beer. All right. So we went to this, uh, really looks like a local place, like 10 minutes drive from here. So we had like this Pilsner or Krell from TAP, you know, but very local. Right, right. It was, a, it was really good, actually. I can imagine it was uh, just like, uh, as you said, five to ten minutes, Angel, the big place crowded yeah. uh, with a trance around. The Angel, around. the Angel, Angel right. Yeah, and exactly. the typical Pilsner, really old, uh, That's I mean, it. old, cool class tables, That's it. the big guy serving you the beer. Perfect. I uh, felt like Schweik, you know. <laughs> Next to beer, Attila also had a great deal of compliments for Czech festival Brutal Assault. I love it, you know, and we, so long time ago we played there already with Mayhem, like 2006 maybe, mm -hmm. you know. Even played there with Sun, I had a solo show there. Thomas is a great guy, and I think that festival you guys can be really proud of it. It's like really a statement, and everybody loves it. Uh, you always in, in interviews commenting that let's say South America is also one of the wildest locations to play at. So what would be the comparison? It's um, different. Uh, uh, we didn't. I can't recall if we played festival in South America right now. Yeah, we did once in Ecuador. But I want to say the South American uh, uh, metal fans and extreme metal fans are is, is, uh, is another level. It's mm. totally, uh, they are very passionate about it. I've been many times at riots and problems, you know, and this like, blooded Yeah, or like some reasons the show was delayed, people went crazy, you know, and like, but they really respect us and love us. I guess it's something with a, their mentality and also how religion, you know, took over. I mean, if you think about the really like the ground and the history, mm -hmm. of that part of the world when, you know, became their Western people. Okay, one thing we brought there like, the torch of knowledge in a way or light, but in another hand, didn't respect what was there. I met once in Peru with a dude, he had like this tattoos. I was like, wow, that looks cool. So he's like, oh really, I, look at that. So he brought another guy. He just took off the t-shirt, I was like, what the fuck is going on? He had all this amazing, like the tattoo, the whole history of the Inca. And the guy was like a scholar. Uh -huh. Still have his contact somewhere. He's from Peru, and I asked him if he could take me to the, the really the ruins, like where you know, um, not so touristic. But I love to go to the Middle East, like Egypt. I've been there like many times. I have friends there, like eight times, perhaps. I've been to Lebanon two times. I love that area because of the ruins, because mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. all the ancient stuff, like stuff like Baalbek in Lebanon. It's the biggest ever man-made one piece of monolith. It's in Lebanon, in Baalbek. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like 13,000 tons. Uh, no, 1,300 tons, sorry. <laughs> I wish Middle East would be free and not fucked up. It's so fucking such a shame of the world. And they destroy like places in Syria. I so yeah. regret I didn't go there before. I was planning mm -hmm. 
Come on. You're talking about recent uh, destroyers of Islamic State? They destroyed so many of the valuables from history. Yeah, I don't know, call it whatever, you know. For me it's the same, just fucking idiots. But I also read next to this that you were also very passionate about learning the vocal techniques. During those travels, were you also learning, if I read correctly, so the Tibetan approach to guttural singing? Um, it's a very long way for me, you know, I started when I was 15, that was my first time I was on stage. Um, with my first mentor, mentor in Hungary. <laughs> anything about vocal techniques <laughs> uh, but later through the years um, I yeah I I tended like especially after Tormentor and uh, before Plaza Pool I tried different projects like the psychobilly and stuff mm -hmm, like that mm -hmm. so that time also we anyway approached like this vocal teacher heard about the breathing techniques I still played like in pieces like I was a Kayafash in Jesus Christ Superstar, you know, like, Oh, gentlemen, you know why we are here. Like, uh, the, the person who kills Jesus, uh, I had to attend uh, a vocal teacher, you know, and mm -hmm. she was talking again about the same thing. So I learned a lot and I used these exercises and uh, I like to practice, you know, on, not all the time, but uh, the cool thing with the vocals, you have your instrument with you, so sure. you could actually practice any time if you want. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, it's like an instrument, so I have to tune it every day almost, it's interesting. Throat singing is so many different ways, for instance, and like... <laughs> It's like you controlling your breathing and mm -hmm. kind of like opening your throat and different, making these shapes. Um, but still, so much to learn. I would never forget the show that you did with the sun uh, at Royal Salt with the ah, back these way. sort of the sounds. That was fucking yeah. impressive. Yeah, yeah, you can do this backwards and it's pretty powerful, you know, like, kind of like, 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 very um, powerful sound, you know, if you do like back way, mm. it's great to play with Sun and Steven, you know, it's so much experience, so what I experienced at the sound shows, you know, I, it's just so much freedom, could use mayhem, like much more, much more controlled and like more sophisticated. I just love music, you know, and uh, I adore vocalists and uh, I always, you know, try to just follow up, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm really glad you started the talking about the vocal techniques as when I was uh, trying to compare uh, my most favorite Mayhem album, Esoteric Warfare, with the latest uh, Demon. Esoteric Warfare was extremely raw, very energetic, and it, it, it almost didn't give you a second to relax, but it was in certain heaviness beautiful. With Demon, there are so many various structures, various sounds, various approaches, and sort of more accessible. So, why did you decide to move it slightly in another direction? Um, we just wanted to do something else, you know, and um, I think. If you look at like up from Ordo to Esoteric, you know, there was like a line lineup change in the band, it's been years past. We had to keep this continuity, or I felt like we should keep continuity. Those two albums are a little bit related to each other. <laughs> but 
now uh, this album it was more like let's get everybody involved and also like just uh, it's free so just do some try something else you know go back a bit to the old common themes you know and and demon diamond is is like that the meaning of the word also in ancient greek is like a channel but also it's like something like we just i think it was important for us now and that's why i think this album is maybe have this uh, unique unit unity like uh, uh, that's like why it stands out from the other records because now everybody was involved actually And for the last uh, question, when I was preparing for this interview and checking a couple of uh, interviews that you guys did recently, uh, Necrobutcher was in uh, one music store and was picking up uh, the albums which are important to him, to him uh, throughout his whole life. And there, there were a couple of surprising pieces. So I'm just wondering if you could mention also some albums from your whole life, childhood, growing up, which are not necessarily metal related. He was mentioning Depeche Mode, Police, Beastie ah, okay. Boys. Cool. No, no metal, of course. Um, let's start with Tangerine Dream, if I really go back in time. Mm -hmm. Also, I was completely into uh, old electronics, like Skinny Puppy, Frontline Assembly. Depeche Mode, yeah, yeah, a little bit. Uh, I was more into dark shit. I was into anything which was dealing with dark, so I was mm. super impressed by the 80s. Uh, when in the mid of 80s, I was into extreme metal to hear about these bands, like dealing with darkness and stuff, like totally dark, and like these noises, and like loops, and like crazy shit. Actually, like Celtic Frost took me to there, because in the early Celtic Frost albums, they always had this experimental song, mm -hmm. like Dance Macabre and stuff. Also, I was into uh, Psycho Billy, like old meteors, and Meteor has been really crazy in the beginning, and I think still the end. Classical music like Mussorgsky. Or like very early Pink Floyd, or, or even like some of uh, like Wonder Graph Generators. Paul Emerson, Lake and Palmer, album like Tarkus, it's fucking killer. Do you know uh, Boren und der Club of Gore, the band from Germany? Probably never no. You should really check this out. No. These guys came from extreme metal in a way, but it's an old band, and they have this amazing old sax player. Mm -hmm. It's very dark, very ambient, very dark jazz. Boren on their club of gore. I, as friends of mine, we, I opened for them with my solo, Void of Voices. I will definitely check your tips and uh, thank you for a great interview and looking forward to the show. Cheers, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm.